Hey everyone, my name is Tristan Elijah Stallmaker. I'm the community coordinator here at Rising Tide Innovation Center. Uh, thank you, Wilson, uh, one of our members for joining us. And additionally, I am recording this presentation. If any of you would like to come back and revisit this at a later time. And today the topic is focusing on diversity in the workplace, why it's important, for who it's important, uh, and how it can help you and your business succeed as well. So I've created a slide presentation I will be sharing now. So diversity in the workplace. Some of the topics we're gonna cover are what is diversity? what creates a diverse work culture, why it matters, who it matters to, how you and your business can benefit from diversity, and some additional resources as well. So first off, let's start with what is diversity? Diversity in the workplace refers to an organization that intentionally employs a workforce comprised of individuals of varying gender, religion, race, age, ethnicity, sexual orientation, education, and other attributes. What creates a diverse work culture? Diversity and inclusion go hand in hand. When you create a work environment where employees see a representation of a variety of cultures, backgrounds, and ways of thinking, they're more likely to feel comfortable being themselves. This in turn leads to happier, more productive employees. On the other hand, research has found that a strong homogeneous culture can stifle natural cognitive diversity due to the pressure to conform. If employees don't feel like they can be themselves at work, they're more likely to fear rejection and not produce their best work. Teams solve problems faster when they're more cogn cognitively diverse. Why it matters, leveraging a diverse talent pool. When you hire people from diverse backgrounds, nationalities, and cultures, you're bringing a fresh array of perspectives to the table. This can lead to benefits like better problem solving and increased productivity. The US workforce generally ages 25 to 64 is in the midst of a sweeping demographic transformation. From 1980 to 2020, the white working age population is projected to decline from 82% to 63%. And during the same period, the minority portion of the workforce is projected to double from 18 to 37%, and the Hispanic Latino portion is projected to almost triple from 6% to 17%. Who it matters to, diversity and employees. There's a lot of factors that come into the overall happiness at work felt by employees, personality, personal development, building trust, relationships with team and management, feeling challenged at work, diversity and inclusion, innovation, and finding that work and life balance. Here's seven examples that I've found for ways to create a happier, healthier workplace. Number one, your creativity will blossom. Number two, Diversity makes cultural sensitivity the norm. Number three, profits go up. Number four, it promotes intersectionality. Number five, everyone gets to work in a safe environment. Number six, employees work better. And number seven, it benefits all, even those on top. And each of these corresponds with those benefits as well. So number one, one of the benefits of having a more diverse workforce is that team members often challenge each other more. Creating a space that is inclusive and where each individual is seen, heard, and supported as their true self fosters teamwork, productivity, and increases overall creativity. According to Max Masur, a workplace and gender inclusion business coach and co-founder of Argo Collective. Number two, Lots of workplaces suffer from an overabundance of consensus, says Kim Steins, founder and CEO of Ranavane and a hiring consultant and career concierge. 
rather than rigorously developing ideas to be better and work for different kinds of people and situations, people can go with the flow and avoid challenging one another. Number three, diversity benefits not just company culture, but can also increase profits. A study showed that inclusive teams made better business decisions 87% of the time and cut numbers of meetings needed in half. If time is money, that is a lot of dollars. Number four, the term intersectionality was coined in the 1970s by UCLA law professor and civil rights activist, Kimberlé Crenshaw, whose work initially focused on how black women are subjected to sexism from men and at the same time encounter racism from the white feminist movement. Intersectionality means instituting systems that address the various barriers to equality that different people face and calls attention to groups that are disenfranchised on many levels by different groups. Number five, diversity helps create a work environment where people can express themselves fully and are encouraged to contribute. That fear of being judged not on your work, but on who you are is understandable. When people feel supported and protected from discrimination, they're free to do what they were hired to do. Number six, fostering an inclusive environment is more than just making sure employees are happy too. Intersectionality includes making sure that everyone has a voice and that they are safe from violence, both emotional and physical. Everyone deserves to feel safe in the workplace and to be their authentic self. Now, number seven, from a source that I found online, uh, which I've included the link in the presentation as well, there were some tips suggested for including inclusion and diversity in the workplace for both team members and management. Um, we'll just read through them real quick. For teams, suggest that employees add their pronouns to their digital profiles, such as email, LinkedIn, Slack, etc. Talk with employees about the importance of it, both verbal and written. For instance, the use of hey guys may have become second nature, but it can be exclusionary. A better practice is a gender neutral option, such as hey everyone or hey team. Make space for underrepresented people to speak for themselves during meetings. If you see someone quiet during a meeting, ask them what they think. Some tips for management. Have interviews from diverse backgrounds meet with potential applicants during the hiring process, including people who represent the identities of interviewees. This is important to prevent hiring processes and protocols that may inadvertently discount some people and to prevent bias. Clearly communicate accommodations throughout job listings and to new hires. For example, ADA compliant, all gender restrooms, childcare coverage and accommodations, etc. These accommodations help to level the playing field of opportunity for all qualified applicants. Lastly, take actions that create a space for underrepresented people to speak for themselves during the meeting, such as giving everyone in the room an opportunity to talk. Now, how do you and your business benefit from diversity? Well, there's a couple benefits here that I've found uh, from having diversity in the workplace. Easy troubleshooting amongst the team, varied perspectives uh, from a very diverse cultural background, promoting that you do accept diversity and inclusion in the workplace also attracts some of the best talents around, both locally and nationally. Improve profits and revenue for your company, Diversity and inclusivity also drives employee engagement, going back into the happiness factor and overall job satisfaction at work. And it also boosts your global reputation as a company that cares, not just about the profits, but also about creating that safe place for people to innovate and work and feel comfortable. A study has found a direct link between inclusive decision-making decision and better business performance. The study analyzed around 600 business decisions made by 200 teams across a range of companies. Researchers found that when diverse teams of three or more people made a business decision, they outperformed individual decision makers up to 87% of the time. Diverse teams were also shown to make decisions faster than individual workers and benefited from a 60% improvement on decision making. Effective decision-making also increases with greater diversity in a team. All male teams were shown to make better business decisions than individuals 58% of the time, while gender-diverse teams outperformed individuals 73% of the time. 
Teams that were geographically diverse and included members of different genders and had at least one age gap of more than 20 years were the most successful, making better business decisions than individuals 87% of the time. This research aligns with behavioral economics theory, which has clear implications for results both Focus company, says David Daniels, an assistant professor in the Department of Management at Stanford University. Business strategy should revolve around a decision-making process. And to conclude the presentation, I have attached some additional resources as well that we'll cover. Um, but first things first, consider using a diversity focused survey to identify your organization's specific gaps so you know where to focus your resources. Otherwise, you may make false assumptions and spend your time on initiatives that ultimately don't have a significant impact. You have to identify what your needs are. Does your workforce resemble the communities that you operate in? Do they match the demographic that you serve or want to serve? If not, developing a hiring strategy to increase workforce diversity might be ideal for you and your business. Some steps, you could talk to local organizations with community connections, including churches, cultural institutions, et cetera. You can also enlist help from nonprofits like the Urban League, the National Council of La Raza, or from websites like diversityworking.com that offer searchable channels of minority job hunters. Next, ask employees for referrals since they will have peers in the industry or know qualified candidates who may be looking for work. The relationship can also help new employees adjust to the move. Furthermore, develop and implement an equal opportunity employment policy that follows the federal EEOC, US Equal Employment Opportunity Commission guidelines. The goal is to establish a meritorious hiring practice that is age, race, gender, and minority neutral. Provide diversity training in your workplace. All employees should understand that hiring decisions are based on finding the best candidate and not by quotas. Making the recruiting process more transparent can help ease the minds of skeptical employees. Also be sure managers fully understand the benefits of a diverse workplace. Offer benefits such as on-site daycare, childcare subsidies and flexible schedules, and let new hires know that you are willing to accommodate cultural and religious holidays and diversity friendly, but office appropriate apparel choices. If your community doesn't have familiar cultural offerings like ethnic restaurants, specialty markets, or international movies, you can work with the local chamber of commerce to campaign for more diversity and fill those needs. Thank you everyone for attending. And if you would like a copy of the presentation, I would be more than happy to send it to you. Uh, just shoot me an email at communitymanager at risingtidecowork.com. And lastly, some Q&A. Great presentation.